Hi, honey. All right, the flight was rough. I'll call you from the road, okay? All right, I love you. Bye, honey. A nice, big, roomy car. Oh, no. No. No, I didn't rent a subcompact. Come on. I'm not that picky a customer. I'll take anything, but I want a big car. I can't get my suitcase in this piece of crap. Hello? Oh, this isn't going to be pretty. This is not going to be pretty. You're an ugly car, and I don't like you, and I don't think this is going to be fun. Okay, little feller. This is it. Oh, this is horrible. I hope you drive better than you look, because I'm hurting myself right here. This is a joke. Just out here having fun. I've been buying, selling, and trading classic cars for over 40 years. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. You could call it work, but for my team, it's a whole lot more. I'm Ted Vernon, and this is my place, South Beach Classics. Woo! Hey, Larry, what's going on, bro? How you feeling? Good, good. good to see you. you. Good. Good trip. Cool place. Well, I thought you'd like this, you know. Yeah. Little car flavor and an old time diner. You know what I like about diners? Uh, Normally they're open 24 hours a day. You can get breakfast all day. All day long. They all got coffee. Yeah. When you're hungover, that's a really good thing. <laughs> Even if the coffee is not good, it's still good. Diners are all kind of go back to the cars, the old cars, the old times, the 50s, the 60s, all comes together. It does. Yeah. I mean, look. There you go. It's great, no? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I like diners because they serve desserts. Sometimes desserts aren't that good, but they're still desserts. It's all nostalgia. Everybody's into this nostalgia. You're the biggest antique transmission guy in the country, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's doubt. pretty impressive. It's a neat little thing. It's a nice little niche. Yeah, but it's something you've created. I mean, it's not just happening. You know, we're keeping all these old cars on the road. Well, let's order some food. Let's get some lunch. I'm a happy guy. Time to eat. I know a British guy up here who has some interesting cars. He's got a 69 Roadrunner he wants to sell. Hey there, Ted. How are you, man? Good, Good to, to see, see you. Mate. I'm time no see. I got this gentleman from England. He's got a 69 Roadrunner, matching numbers car, four speed, all the right things. I'm usually exporting, so this is a little bit new for me. So if he wants reasonable money, I'll own this car. There is an attraction to classic cars in the UK. We've got a location here, and we've got a location in London as well. There's a lot of demand for these cars in the US, and we really don't have as much of a demand for this exact model in the UK, and it's not worth me shipping it, so I want to get rid of it here. So tell me about the car. It's a Plymouth. It's a Roadrunner. It's 69? A, it's a 69. It's a 383. Matching numbers? Matching numbers. All original. You know, it's got a V8 in it. Four speed? Uh, four speed, manual. You know, you can get the power to the ground on this car. Let me ask you a question. Yeah? Somebody shoot at you? I don't know, it wasn't me. It was with it when I got it. This is 335 horses. This is one of the original muscle cars. It's a matching numbers car, which is huge for collectors. It's a four speed car, buckets, console, it's got it all. I'm not gonna let it go too cheap. I'd like to see 15,000. That's gonna give him shipping costs down there and he might get away with 22 to 25,000. If I'm under 20 in that car, I'm good. That's just so easy to sell, so much in demand. If I'm under 20, it's my car. I need to get 22,000 bucks for this car. What? I, what? Books, books. I don't have books, I got money. A single book? Like a quid, a book. A book. A book. A book is a buck. A book's a book. I need the books. I need the books. Come on. So let's do it, 22,000 books. I know Ted's gonna come back and try and get me down as low as he can, but the demand for this car in Miami is huge. He could sell these every single day. I don't not wanna sell the car, but I've gotta be sensible. This is a very sought after motor vehicle. Let me tell you, in all honesty, I'm going to tell you what I think. I think the car is going to bring me 18 to 22 is what I think I'll get for it. What I've got to buy this car for without beating you up, 10, 12, 14, that's no, where I got to be. That's way off. You know, you know what this I'm car is. I'm not buying I do it to too. keep it. I'm buying it to sell it. I'm not on your side. I'm on my side. I want to buy it with enough room to ship it back to Florida and sell it. So 12 to 14, I'm in good shape. I'll move a little bit because I know you've got to ship it south. Let's say 20 grand. Can't. Say 20, it's an original car, Ted. It is, it is. Oh, it's absolutely original. The demand for these muscles is massive, especially down your way. Not those ones, these ones. 
20 grand. Nope. Look at it, it's beautiful now. 15 grand done. 17.5. Come on, you're beating me up now. I've got to spend a G whiz to get it home. We can get this down for a few hundred bucks, you know no, that. You can't. You're going to have to move a bit, mate. You're going to have to move a bit. It's all original, the numbers match. It'll be gone by next week with the amount of people he has down south. I was picking on him because that's my job. And I'm explaining why I'm not going to pay him 25 grand. A lot of people don't get it. He gets it. I like the car. $16,000, done deal, and I'm done. And if you don't shake it soon, I'm taking it away, and I'm taking a hike. We got a deal, mate. <laughs> That's good. Good deal. That's yeah, fair. I'm happy with sure. that. I'm 16. happy with that. I did it. I got more than my bottom number, and I am pleased as punch. 16,000 bucks for this car means that, oh, I'm happy as a sandboy, I can't tell you. I'm real happy with the deal. It's a good car to have at South Beach Classics. It's got the look, it's original, it's straight as a gun barrel. I'm happy. You know, I think it's a good idea. It's something else to, to bring in more people. People come here all the time. They don't know where they're going to eat. You know, we're always sending them somewhere else far away from here. It's a new project, something different. I'm willing to go for it. Trolleys that were turned into diners. Yeah, yeah, you know, I can see them all. I know Ted's up in, uh, in New Jersey, a trolley diner, what am I supposed to tell him? You want to buy it? I agree with you, it probably would be an awesome thing. I just don't think he's going to be happy about it, especially since you're telling him to go drive up there. All right, I'll give him a call and I'll give him the address information. No problem, though. Bye bye. I drove up to see Larry, and I pull up in this car they rented me. What the heck's that thing? Don't even say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't really, even say really anything. driving in style now. I'm a real success. I can't even get out of the car. You get a little help out? <laughs> yeah. I rented a full-size SUV. Yeah. <laughs> they gave me this. Larry is one of our best suppliers with transmission parts. And I pull up in this car they rented me. And then looking up at him like this, I felt real stupid. We're about automatic transmission parts, 1946 till today. The specialty being the old stuff. It's a good business money to be made. With the automotive industry changing the way it is and, and the newer cars not as uh, plentiful in the shops as they were, the antique is a good replacement for it. And here's the shipping department. So we do 30, 40 packages a day, which for us is a good number. This is a lot of the uh, used hard parts that have been inventoried in the computer, on the shelf, ready to go. All right, quick, what's that for? Uh, for our 70. This is what they call a damper plate. This is what they call a torque ball retainer. This is not the kind of stuff you find at the corner auto parts place. And I don't think anybody can compete with what you're doing. I don't think anybody could really start a business today doing what we do. It's not like someone's just going to start an app and put you out of business. Right. No. If they had an app and wanted to buy this stuff, they'd probably have to buy it from us. I don't think there's a probably here. The guy is a brilliant guy when it comes to building cars. And he's brilliant in the transmission business. You know, he's a sharp guy. How are you? Nice to meet, to meet you. you. Pleasure. I'm just uncovering this for you, trying to be as dramatic as possible. Very dramatic. Very dramatic. And voila, the beauty. Viola. It's what what you do you think? I think it's a Porsche. Uh huh. And it's a 65? It's a 65. Last year for this car. Last year for this car. Yes. I was in New Jersey buying cars, and I heard about a Porsche that's up here in New York State. And it's my kind of Porsche. We have a wonderfully sentimental 1965 Porsche 356 that I bought for my wife 33 years ago. And it's particularly sentimental to my wife. Her dad had one when he was a younger man and she remembered it. For my, I should say our first anniversary, my husband decided to surprise me. I knew nothing about it. And the next morning, there was the car with a bow on it. This is my wife, Leslie. Hi, nice Ted. To meet nice you. to meet you. Hi. And she's the decision maker when it comes to this. Why are you selling the car? Well, we're not quite sure we're selling it yet, are we? What I don't like is it's a husband and wife. One wants to sell it, one doesn't. I don't want to get involved with that. Normally, it's always the wife pushing the man to get rid of the car. I think this might be the first time this has ever happened. So moving to a smaller place, we're not going to be able to accommodate uh, more than two cars in the place. So it's a matter of downsizing as well. In the first couple of years, I did mostly cosmetic improvements and repairs. I did some body work, redid the engine. And it was also a great way to get next to my father. I'm trying to think of this in terms of through my heart and through my head. It's tough. Okay. 
It's a, a project. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now I would like to talk numbers with you. I know Ted's not a sentimental guy, and it's business. When one negotiates, one always starts high and hopefully works down to their target price. I mean, I would love to get $50,000. The bottom, maybe 25. We start at 90. That's more than three times the value of the car. But there's another ingredient, and maybe it shouldn't work because Emotion. of this other, yes. That doesn't make a bit of difference to the value of the car. Counter it. I'm a lot closer to 20. That's pretty much the number of what the car's worth. I mean, I haven't even gotten into the fact that I gotta tear out the interior, do the car. There's a lot of work. Is there the possibility of taking your offer, sleeping on it overnight? I feel as though I need 24 hours to just... How about instead of 24 hours, I just stroke you a check for 24,000. I don't think you're gonna get more than that for the car. I'm just having difficulty saying goodbye. And your heart's in here. All Real, right, give, give us one moment. Please. If I leave here with no deal, there's not gonna be a deal. It's been out of sight so long anyway. What's the difference? She'll decide she'd like to keep it, don't hold it for, I don't know what. And you got an extra 25 in your pocket. <laughs> I don't normally work this hard to buy a car. It's just a car. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't, uh, I can't begin to do this. I, I really thought I could buy this car. A lot of driving for nothing. How about 28 and it's yours? How about 25 and it's mine and I'll pay you for it and it's done? I wish I wasn't so emotionally attached. It's time. I. It's honestly time. It is a sweet car. I know what it means to you, but I promise you it'll be a concourse car. You know, it gets a whole new life. That's something to be happy about. All right. 25? Yep. 26? No. 25 done. I'm happy. I hope you'll <laughs> I hope you'll be happy. It was a very emotional deal for them and it was a very emotional deal for me. All the deals aren't like this. So I mean I got caught up in it too. I'm happy about it because it's going to a good home and it's going to a professional. It was a, a deal that needed to be handled with kid gloves. Otherwise it was gonna fall apart. They were tough, but they were fair and it was time to go for that car for them. And I'm excited about it. I love it. I'm happy. Uh, Ted, no, it's Marcus. I gotta drive two hours to look at a diner? You get to do something you like. You get to go look at new things. I'm not interested in doing this. When I told Ted that he had to go driving from New Jersey to Philadelphia about 120 miles, he was very upset about it. I got some miniature car they gave me at the rental place. I'm horrified. I don't want to drive anywhere in it. It took some convincing, but I finally got him to go and he'll enjoy it. Now I gotta go look at a restaurant. I'm really not interested in having a restaurant, but I have to go look. This ain't fair. I got a call from this fella, Big Ed, that sort of kind of wound up with the DeLorean. They're not a great car, but they're a great selling car. I would be a buyer for a beautiful DeLorean for 20, 25 grand. And then you got to go backwards from there. If it needs anything, it's worth a whole lot less. You must be Big Ed. <laughs> you must be Ted. Uh, sure. How are you? Man? <laughs> Good, man. Good to meet you. I'm a stand-up comedian. I travel around, I tell jokes. I went down and did the show. They didn't have the money to pay me. and. This is what I wound up with, and we had a good time. I'm glad I went, but I got to get a paycheck, man. I'm here for the bucks. They only made about 8,500 of these to start with, which means there's nowhere near 8,500 of them left now. What the heck? What happened here? It didn't happen in my possession. They, they said a tree fell on it. It's really damaged. But you're the master of bringing things back to life. This is a red hot special. Well, let me ask you a question now. How much do I need to pay you for this $5,000 car? <laughs> He is kind of tough, ain't he? There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it's got a dent in it, but it's a DeLorean. Paint that sucker silver, put you a pair of wool buys on there. Wool buy! Everybody, you could sell it for $30,000. $30,000 silver paint wool buy. If you paint this car, it's worth less than if it's stainless. It's this not is, bad. No, really no, bad. I'm not saying anything, but it's well, thousands you gotta of fix dollars. Because I know I wouldn't. You wouldn't have it sitting on your lot with a den in it. I know you're going to fix Get it. Get serious you with me, because nice I'm, I'm really interested in buying the car. My gut feeling is that Ed does not want to bring the car home, but he's playing hardball with me. I know a little more about DeLoreans than he does, and I'm going to try to explain about the car. If not, I'll shake his hand and go. You got real bad damage on that side. You throw me a number. I'm thinking 7,500 bucks. <laughs> Come on, 23. It's not cheap to fix a DeLorean. Parts aren't cheap, the repairs aren't cheap. The max I can go is 10 grand. The car needs work. Yeah, it's it, it does. It's harder than Joe it, Lewis. It, you uh, can't just hammer this out. 
I'm, so, right. I'm sorry, bro. All right, right here. Let me show you. It'll start. These come with it. 10 grand. You got something you know you're going to sell. You're happy. I'm happy. I get to fly home first class. You you made a deal. You did? Really? <laughs> I sold my car. I sold my car. 10 grand, man. Ten grand. I've never flown. I would have got $2,500 out of that show. Oh, wait a minute now. If you'd have done the show and gotten paid, you'd have gotten 25. So instead of this, you took the car and wound up with 10 grand. I'm a genius, big boy. I feel like I'm lucky to have started at 25,000 and wound up at 10. When he hit me at 25, I absolutely thought he was taking a shot at me. I didn't think that he thought his car was worth 25. He was taking a shot. Hey, maybe Taylor give me 25. But that is not the way it works with me. I'm, I'm in the car business. I'm gonna sell that car and make a lot of money. I'm not worried about Ted. I bought some good cars up here. Now it's time to say goodbye to Larry. I like to look at cars. I like to buy cars. I wanna go out and play with the cars. All right, here's the collection. All my little gems. This is gorgeous. 71 Chevy, 350 engine, 700 trans, factory color blue. Nice little truck. What about this one? This is a modified, restified 66 Coronet 500. Wanna sell me this car? Nah, too much time, too much effort in it. Now, I love 63, 64 caddies. That's a 64. Yeah. The fins point out in the back. You know, all the nice cars you got, I see this thing you're driving in, a little tin can. How far you gotta go in that thing? I've got to go to Philadelphia to look at a diner. We we'll slide in this caddy for a while. You want to take that? To Philly? It'll go. No problem. No problem. Ted was worried about driving the caddy to Philadelphia, but we're very confident in our cars. We take good care of them. We work on them ourselves. You know, we did the trans on it a year or two ago, and uh, it, it, it runs good. It's all got good Fatsco parts in it. I'm glad I bought lunch for Larry because he saved my giving me that caddy to drive, because that's me. That little car just is not me. I love it, thank you very much. You got it. That's great. I saved Ted from his rental car because he just looked so uncomfortable in that little silver thing. And I know he likes the antiques and the classic cars, and why not? Take it for a ride. Finally, I can get behind the wheel of a real car. Thanks, Larry. I heard you're the man I got to see. I'm yeah. Ted Vernon. How are you? Adam Meadows, general manager. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I got to ask you some questions if you don't mind. I think you got to have a couple screws loose to want to go into the restaurant business. Perfect. This place is off the charts. It's so beautiful. How long did it take you to build this? It took about a year. We bought it, an actual Philadelphia trolley, and we had it shipped out to Pittsburgh and had it refurbished, and we kind of made it all go together. The old part of the building is what is our beer room now. You know, the beer room is making me a little bit more interested in having that bus. Well, it sounds like you have enough space for it. Yeah, you sit, put up a nice beer display, and relax and hide. Yeah. Absolutely. So the ice cream business is a good business. Oh yeah, I mean we do adult milkshakes, we do regular milkshakes. Adult milkshakes obviously have liquor in them. We really? Make, yeah, we make our own water ice, we have soft serve. I we... could do ice cream all year long down right. by me. Our ice cream is wonderful. But I mean, the it's profit great ice on cream. ice cream is huge. It's good. Well Adam, now that I've talked to you, I think, I, I think it's gonna work. The ice cream, the beer, food. I mean, you've given me ideas, you've shown me that this could work. This wonderful trolley car restaurant, and I've been meeting with the manager, talking about the bus. He's got some amazing ideas. It's going to work. I think I'm coming over to your side of it. I'm on board, whatever I can do. He went, he enjoyed it. Apparently, he had a good experience. I think it changed his mind, which doesn't happen very often. It has to be something that he liked. Hopefully, when he gets back, we can start working on it and, and get something done. Old cars and classic diners go together, like apple pie a la mode. Man, I've eaten too much on this trip, but it is what it is. God hates a coward. Wow.